Okay, and we're back for part two in pitching your startup to angel investors or venture capitalists. I'm Robert Dickey, Gaming University's Global Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, in the first part, in part one, we talked uh, about some general classroom stuff for this week. And then we did a quick introduction to the idea of pitching. And then we spent most of our time talking about the elevator pitch, the job that you'll be doing next week in class. Again, that an elevator pitch is usually about 30 seconds. Uh, but for our class, I'm going to give you up to one to two minutes to try to work things together. And at that point, we'll be uh, pretty much finishing up the semester. But this time is less about grading and more about developing your skills for your future as entrepreneurs and giving you the background and the skills so that you can develop your pitch to go after the big bucks and I've got some kind of shiny light on my face I don't know what's going on it's later now and the overhead lights are shining off my glasses and making me look like I've got white stars and white lines under my eyes uh well you know that's what happens ladies and gentlemen it's 10 45 p.m. and I'm just starting lecture two Ah, the life of a professor. Can't beat it. All right. So here we're going to talk about the general guidelines for pitching. And let me move my face out of your way. Your target is not to show off a bunch of pictures. Your target is not to do uh, some kind of production that makes your professor happy. Your job is to tell a story. Your job is to finally, at the end of the day, generate the money, other forms of capital, resources, to help your company take off. You're out there trying to get money from angel investors and venture capitalists, and you don't need a professor giving you a bunch of nonsense. You want to know how to go get the bucks, go get the money. And the way to do that is to tell a story. A pitch deck is not a bunch of PowerPoint slides. Even though a lot of what you're going to see on the internet revolves around the idea of making this beautiful pitch deck. Okay? Pitching is about you telling the story about your concept, your company, your product, why it's going to be a big success, why they want to get in with you so that they can share your success, they can make some money. So in order to tell your story, you need to show some passion, show that you believe in it, show that you love it, show that you're investing in it, not only with your money or other resources, not only with your time, but with your love, with your energy. And you want to show that so that they can share that passion. Because if they think you don't really care, if they think you're only putting one little toe in the water to test it, they're not going to join with you. They want to see that you're all in, that you jumped off the diving board with a plan, and you're in the water. And it's great. The water's great. Come join us. When you're doing your pitching, you need to have a backup plan. Things go wrong. In the classroom, you know that there are going to be days where the professor finds out the computer won't read his USB, the Internet's not working right, the PowerPoint's not working right. In the old days, there might be a problem with light or heat. So you've always got a plan B. And there's several parts to this plan B. One of the ideas is to not carry a PowerPoint file or a keynote file into a meeting. 
this may sound strange, but for example, if I build a beautiful PowerPoint in my office computer, which is a Korean style Hangul, uh, Hangul uh, PowerPoint, and I take it to Japan, I might get a bunch of funny characters. Because things that looked good in the Korean system might look funny in a Japanese system. It's just the fact. The best thing to do is to take your PowerPoint series or your keynote series, your pitch deck, and convert them into PDF. Because once you've got a clean looking PDF file, it will look the same on every computer. Right? So you can go into any office and use their computer and their display system, and it looks fine. And if worse comes to worse, and you took your notebook computer into the meeting, and something happened and your computer's not working right, somebody spilled coffee on it, you dropped it, it just doesn't want to work. If you've got a PDF file on a USB and up in the web somewhere that anybody could download, it's in your email, you've got Gmail or neighbor mail or whatever, and you can access it and download it. With a PDF, you can show it on anybody's computer. All right? So, while you may want to keep your PowerPoint or Keynote as your plan one, always have a PDF version just in case. And more, print copies from your, especially from your PDF. Why? At the end of your meeting, you can hand out the print copies. Probably not a good idea to hand out print copies during the meeting, because then people are looking at the paper, they're not listening to you, okay? Uh, same if you go to a conference, professors, a general advice is you don't hand out the handouts, you don't give away the handouts until after you're done talking. You want people's eyes. You want them looking at you and whatever you're pointing at. Don't hand out your handouts. So, convert your system into a PowerPoint, into a PDF, and make copies. And again, at the end of the meeting, you can hand out copies so that people can remember what you talked about. The next general guideline is be quick and be specific. Okay, Get to the point. Don't tell lots of long, rambling stories that are not related. Telling a story could be really, really useful, really, really good. But make sure it's not long. Make sure that it closely ties to your issue, the problem you're trying to solve. Maybe the path you took to get to your current solution. Uh, the company history, if you've got a history there. So be, do it quickly. Be specific. Now, in a pitch, you probably have somewhere between 10 minutes to 30 minutes. Find out in advance how much time they're ready for you. Sometimes a pitch will be an hour, but you should plan for roughly half of your time, roughly half of your time, to be question and answer. If you did a good job, they're going to have lots of questions. Questions are good. It means they're interested. Unless they give you a really negative question. They give you one negative question. Like, why did you do this? Isn't ABC doing that? That would be bad. That would be bad. But in general, if they're asking questions, it means they're interested. Remember the uh, video we watched, Shark Tank, and the one guy said, I'm out. I'm not interested anymore. I don't have any questions to ask because I'm not interested. So you want to figure that a part of your time is going to Q&A. They can always keep you longer if they really want. But check and find out how much time they expect for you to present, how much time they usually suggest will be question and answer. Fix your time. Very often it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then if they want more information, that's great. So you know that a lot of the fine details are going to come up in Q&A time. And some of the fine details are going to be in handouts that you give afterwards, like your financial reports, your business plan as a written document. You're going to give that to them. Probably going to give it to them a little bit later. Maybe you'll give it to them early, but not at the very, very beginning, if you have a choice. Now, Many companies are going to, re the, the venture capitalist companies are going to require that you send 
documents in advance so they can look at it and they can choose if they even want to hear your pitch or they might say no nah, not interested you, you, you can't win that you have to do what they want you to do but back to your pitch know the details of what you want to talk about know the details that they might be asking questions about but present it in a way that's not boring don't bury them with so many facts give them the information they need right away let them ask questions for the other time now what happens here is that I'm going to stop with this PowerPoint and go to our CTL because there's lots of information there and frankly it's easier to work this there so I'm gonna work from our CTL and I'll just move myself down to the bottom for now what is your aim well as we just mentioned here's the top tell a story okay. just so you know this section follows the section we talked about in hour one about elevator pitches general introduction to pitching the timeline it's all here okay it's all here but at this point we're gonna work from here all right so we talked about tell a story the next point to observe here and I'm gonna turn on my marker pen okay is what I like really like about this is oh come on come on come on okay enable there's no such thing as a perfect pitch deck it's never gonna be perfect you might get lucky and it's perfect for that audience but there's a lot of luck involved it wasn't purely skill but there are lots of things you can do to maximize to increase to the greatest level the possibility that people who are listening are gonna are gonna be really 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 impressed they're really gonna like what you're doing so that's our target that's our aim pitch decks are continually optimized they're continually refined for the next group you're going to talk to. Who's the immediate audience? Who are we talking to now? Right. What just happened? There are some basic guidelines. There are some basic guidelines that can help you prepare a pitch deck that will answer the questions most investors will ask so if you are preparing a pitch deck for a meeting on Tuesday and you know who you're talking to you've got a pitch deck and you adjust it a little bit for that group and you've got another meeting on Friday and you know that the Friday investors have different interests they have different orientation they look at things a little bit differently so you're gonna want to change your pitch deck a little bit for the next group so you know, keep a lot of space on your computer keep all of your versions of a pitch deck so you don't have to reinvent things you go the week after next to a group and you say oh some of that from Tuesday was really good and some of that from Friday was really good and let's pull it together so you never throw away an old pitch but you're constantly going to be refining them fine-tuning them to make it just a little bit better for this group or you might find out that something you thought was really clever they didn't like and somebody actually tells you that well why why did you show that picture that picture doesn't tell a good story for you you really shouldn't do that next time we're not gonna fund you but my advice is that uh, you probably want to get rid of that picture it's not helpful and we'll talk a little bit about that later okay so what should you focus on well probably the first or second slide should be a really good summary maybe your first slide is a kind of a show-and-tell greeting but don't waste their time don't spend a lot of time with a pretty picture of your company that doesn't give a message and 
know if your logo is really pretty but it doesn't help explain who you are and what you do then it's probably the wrong logo to put on the front page high level summary this is very often the case where you show bullets if you remember uh, my PowerPoint slide that I started the first hour lecture with the first slide was you know this class the second slide talked about the three parts the three videos that I'm creating for this week and a summary of what was in each part kind of a road map to give you a hint not too much detail but you know, first we're gonna go here then we're gonna go here while we're here we're gonna do this and then we're gonna go here and we'll be done so summary slide start off strong show them something in your first 15 seconds they're going ooh I want to hear more this is exciting and interesting and maybe I've got money for these guys okay again remember that uh, series of YouTube studies that said that even after 15 20 seconds a lot of people are turning off they didn't like this video and they're changing the channel in 15 or 20 seconds people are already tuning out of your 10 20 30 minute pitch because you didn't capture their interest and when we saw a couple of uh, of uh, shark tanks one of them had kids running out uh, the school bell and the kids came out and sat at the bench and opened up their lunch boxes well kids are cute but they were eating lunch and that was key central to their image now they were they could do a show and tell on that TV program you probably can't do that kind of thing but your first image should attract attention so for example if we were doing the uh, adventure backpacks maybe I would have an adventure backpack for the people that I thought were in the meeting I would walk in the first thing I would do is walk up and say please have an adventure backpack please have an adventure backpack. this adventure backpack is for your grandson this adventure backpack is for your granddaughter something like that if you know who they are and you know their family better and better right? in the first 15 seconds you need to capture their attention and remember that a pitch deck is not just the images. It can be anything that you have or do, the clothes you wear. It's all part of that pitch. Number two, identify the problem. Where's my mouse? There we go. Identify the problem that you're solving. If there's no problem, why do we need you? Yes, there are new inventions that come out that do very well that don't solve a problem uh, the pet rocks there was no problem the, the idea that well maybe uh, somebody was living alone and they were lonely well come on a pet rocks really not gonna do that you are better off to buy a Barbie doll no that was a joke that was that if there was a problem there it was that people needed to find small inexpensive gifts for Christmas or whatever you know, to the office party we're going to exchange gifts and we have a price limit you can't spend more than five dollars we needed these small fun novelty gifts novelty fun interesting different but in general you gotta have a problem all right so in this guide and I've got several guides that we're gonna walk through here they suggest these could be a couple of perfunctory slides or three a couple means two perfunctory means not very important very general common kinds of things people talk about you know for your company very uh, not fantastic but clear cut okay a picture of a woman with a baby who's screaming in a shopping cart in a grocery store <clears throat> you can't find such a picture find a mom with a kid Go into a grocery store. I guarantee you, before that kid gets out of the grocery store, they're going to be crying about something. There you go. Now send them over to a section where you've got a setup of uh, shopping. And now you've got a problem. Women, shopping, crying babies, or babies reaching for things, reaching for cookies, reaching for candies, reaching for pretty things. There's your problem. <clears throat> what are you going to do? Well, 
women need to buy a toy to placate their baby, to make their baby stop crying, right? A, a, a toy or a cookie or something. Women need dish soap. I'm picking on women. I'm sorry that's sexist. Uh, you know, in a house we need a dish soap. So let's buy a dish soap that combines with a toy. We've got a Teletubby uh, dish soap bottle. We've got a Bororo dish soap bottle. We've got a Yellow Ducky dish soap bottle. <clears throat> we got a problem of kids crying in the store. We've got a solution. Okay, three or uh, three, four or more educational slides. Depends on the audience. You're trying to show the market opportunity. Who are you trying to uh, address? What? problem, what opportunity are you looking at? You're doing this by highlighting what's broken or not working. You know, women are going into stores and things are not working that way. Children are being abducted. Children are getting hurt on the street. You saw a picture of a child crying with a scratched knee or something like that. Okay? If you can, give us an idea about the market opportunity size. Scope out means, you know, explain like a microscope or a telescope, you're looking more closely. Explain to us about the market opportunity. In the best case, these slides make it clear that market participants are spending money for products that don't meet their needs. Imperfect products, products not quite. You're selling my kid, uh, buying my kid a backpack, but you know what? There's no safety system in that backpack. It's imperfect. And our need is we want to feel secure about our kid. Now, if our kid's in middle school, he probably has a phone now. <clears throat> a lot of elementary school kids perhaps have a phone that they carry to school. But probably the youngest elementary school kids and the kindergarten kids don't carry a phone to school. How can we keep track? We're going to have this security system. All right? So people are spending money on backpacks, but it's not. <clears throat> what you're offering is not what they need. Because if nobody is spending money, it's hard to convince somebody that they will spend money in the future. It can change. Think about cable TV. 40 years ago? Yeah, about 40 years ago. Basically, nobody had cable TV. You wanted to watch TV, you had the little antenna on your TV set, or you had an antenna up up in the sky <clears throat> it didn't cost much you had a TV and and basically TV channels came to you free how do we convince people to go to go to cable TV well we showed that people wanted to watch much more than they could that they weren't satisfied with the quantity of things they could see and sometimes the quality the signal was not so perfect so that was a case where they actually were presenting a, a, a total market breakthrough that they were convincing, they were trying to convince society to spend money. And I know at my father's house, we got cable TV maybe eight or ten years later than a lot of neighbors. They were like the, the very first ones to do it, and we were one of the later ones because my father just didn't want to spend the money on TV. But now that he's got it, he's there flipping the channels, watching everything. So you're solving a problem. <clears throat> Uh, in some cases, you need to show that money is being spent. In other cases, maybe not. <clears throat> you want to talk about your product. <clears throat> My voice is going. Now that you've explained the problem, you want to talk about your solution. Okay, now I'm not going to read all the words here. This is on the page. You can read it later. We're talking about your solution. So, uh... Women have screaming babies in the grocery store. Women need dish soap. Women need toys for kids. Women need kids to be quiet. Kids are reaching everywhere. My solution is to combine a toy with a product that women buy anyway. And to do it at a very reasonable price. It's not the same as, well, I have to buy the dish soap, and I have to buy a toy, and this is... Uh, $2, 2001, and this is $3, 3,000 won makes 5,000 won. Well, dish soap costs 
three dollars so my dish soap in a bottle that's kind of a toy cost three dollars it's a bottle it cost me very very little to customize the bottle all right so there's my there's my product for example he talks about how your products are differentiated how is your product different well with the dish soap it's the packaging the dish, dish soap is dish soap right for the most part I mean there's a few dish soaps that are fancy uh, somehow or another but basically dish soap is dish soap put a little smell in it it washes the dishes now you need to convince your audience your potential funders that you have a better mousetrap okay mousetrap is English slang a generic idea that it is the thing that does okay everyone has been trying to find a better way to catch a mouse in your house and we have the basic mousetrap it's been around for I don't know 150 years is there a better way to do it convince them you want to make sure that these slides that you're showing leave no holes in your story that they explain from A to Z they leave no questions unanswered except if there's a question you want to leave unanswered sometimes it's good to not answer all the questions sometimes it's good excuse me I'm moving around sometimes it's good to leave a question available that you want them to ask because you have the answer and it'll make you look good so if you tell them everything they get bored instead you want them to ask questions and you've got the answer now you look smart and they're happy because they got an answer they got the talk you got an answer so you got a product now you need your marketing strategy and again we're back to something that could be a little bit challenging marketing strategy now that you've shown them your product it's a great product and you've shown the need and you've discussed your business model which you'll do briefly now you need to tell them in a good way how you're going to get to the market uh, now as you'll see when we get to the bottom of this this language comes from a website and it's not the way I would say things it's a little bit too salesman like proactively articulate a go-to marketing strategy ah, I wouldn't say it that way proactively means don't wait don't be passive but go out there and do it and articulate means to say in a clear way piece by piece we can understand each step proactively articulate a go-to marketing strategy go to here means the one you plan to do what is the way that you plan to attack your marketing strategy now these slides are going to depend on where you are in your development are you in the beta mode right are you uh, you, you you've got what you think is your final version and you've got a model to show them are you already in the factory production level that 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 trial production where you're gonna make a hundred to make sure that what you could do by hand the machines are gonna do where you are in the process is going to affect how much you can talk about marketing but you need to show here they say to clearly demonstrate to show very easily and clearly that you've thought about how you're gonna go about marketing and how you're gonna capture a share of the market and now again one of the things that you may be looking for in your venture capitalist or angel investor is expertise I've got a product and I've thought about how I want to sell it I want to get into into stores because I don't think my my uh, Bororo or Teletubby or Yellow Duck dish soap is gonna sell very well online I just don't think if people buy dish soap online through one of those you know uh, uh, a, a grocery store that has home delivery for example uh, Amazon what uh, does Walmart have delivery I'm not sure Costco if, um, I don't think selling online is really gonna work for me 
I think it needs to be in the store, but I need to get into stores. How am I going to get stores to carry my product when I'm competing against these big detergent companies? So I need to think about what I could do, uh, what I want to happen, and then I ask my venture capitalist, here's where I need your help. This is what I'm looking for. Yes, I want your money, but I want your, your know-how, your expertise. Can you help me get my product into stores, into the bigger stores where women go when they're carrying their babies? That's where I want to be. Team. Okay, everything we're going to hear about from now on, all these parts, they all talk about team. I have said in class, I'm a little bit less a fan of team. Um, by what I mean is that is I tend to want to do things more by myself but the reality is if you're going after big money you probably aren't going to be able to do everything by yourself so we heard about people who hire an engineer to design something they I've got the concept but I don't know how to make that concept something that a factory could make I'm gonna need an engineer to help me with some tricks and some tips to make it so it's possible in a factory and not only possible but the factory could make it cheaper did you know that if we do it this way we can do it much cheaper oh okay well that way is the same as this way for me the customer won't care I don't care it looks the same do it so you have to hire somebody um, somebody's going to be on your team either as a short-term member or as a long-term member you know a permanent partner uh, who else is funding you who is who is supporting you in this way or that way so investors are looking for people who can work with a team because if you don't work with other people in a team you probably don't want to work with me the investor and that could be scary right so they're interested in team introduce your team now when we read this particular presentation they keep saying a few slides a few slides a few slides like your slide deck your pitch deck could be 20 or 30 slides and in some cases that is the case but with some other pitch decks they're very very short and we'll see some of those financials and projections okay you're gonna need some financials but whether or not they actually go in the pitch deck is a little bit difficult here is a case where you might want to put almost all of your financials on paper as a handout your business plan your financial plan and that actually anything visual will be very short and your talk will be fairly short and as they note here the truth is unless you are a later stage company the numbers in your projections don't matter but showing that you're at least thinking about it thoughtful projections enhances credibility they want to see that you have some idea what could happen okay here it says also these are these slides should show an appreciation for the capital you're raising in other words I know that this capital is not free I have to spend it well how am I going to spend it in a way that makes sense I'm not just asking for a uh, million dollars and uh, then later I'll figure out how to use it but I think I know it that that doesn't show any appreciation for the capital uh, I'm asking for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and possibly a line of credit for another two hundred fifty thousand dollars here's my projection here's why I need seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and it the two hundred fifty thousand after totals one million is kind of a safe cushion in case this doesn't work quite right uh, the revenues are a little slower than I thought um, but based on the information I have so far I believe I can do this for 750,000 I'm just asking for the cushion of another 250,000 that's what it is why because you want to meet some milestones you're gonna tell them this is the objective if I can do this and this with this money that you're giving me 1 million then it's going to look like oh you're really going places and now more people are going to want to give you more money remember that when we're doing fundraising when we're doing these uh pitches we're often looking at the various levels we talked about this back in week 
four, I think, um, where we are, they talk about like series A and series B and series C funding, right? So very often as companies continue to grow, they're going to need more money. They're going to need more investors. And that makes the people who got in early happy because it means the money that they gave is worth a lot more. If I gave you $10,000 for 10% 10 of your company, $10,000, 10% of your company, that means your company was worth $100,000. And now, six months later, you're selling another 10% to somebody else for two hundred thousand dollars that means I gave you ten thousand dollars for ten percent but now my ten percent is worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's 25 times in six months look how much more my money is worth if I can get somebody to give me it I can cash out somebody else wants to buy that ten percent there you go I'm out I made a lot of money I'm your friend and I'm happy I helped you, but, you know, somebody else offered me more money, and I gave it to them. I gave them my 10%. So you're showing that you appreciate the money you're getting, that the money is important, that I have objectives, goals, milestones along the way, and that when I reach those milestones, it's going to help me get more money in the future. That's my objective. And while your audience might feel like, well, you're kind of guessing early, it's still a way to show that, well, you understand what's going on. The last argument here in this presentation is what they call tone. Consider the tone you want to convey. Tone means the feeling that people get when they hear you. Okay? This is not the information. This is things like maybe your body language. Nothing is more important in determining the right tone for your audience. Be creative. Avoid a dry, mind-numbing presentation like some professors you've had who talk like this, who read their paper, or they turn and they read the PowerPoint that everyone can see. It's so boring! No, you want somebody a little more animated, people who smile, people who move around, maybe maybe tell safe jokes. Always gauge your audience, measure, kind of get a feel for it, and, and play to them, respond to them. If they're in a bad mood, uh, maybe they're having a long day and they've heard a lot of talks, then you're going to have to do something to make them cheery and happy. If they're already in a good mood, well, you can play with that too, so that's good, good. If they come in really doubtful, then you need to be able to find a way to make them less doubtful. Okay. So the argument here is, at the end of the day, when everything is finished, content is king. What is in your deck, and remember the deck is not just the pictures, it's also your talk and your style. The information is the most important. But how do we present that information so it's not too boring? It says layer in creativity. Find interesting ways, right? Want to talk about a lunchbox? So we bring kids out to sit down, because that's who's going to be buying it. But somebody else would come out and say, here is my lunchbox, and this is what we're selling. And that's very boring. Yeah, bring in the kids. If I'm going to have uh, kids' backpacks, what can I do to make it more interesting. If I'm going to give it to the people who were there, do I just hand it to them? Should I throw it to them? That's probably too much. But what about when they open the backpack, there's something in there that's fun or something that is specific to them. Maybe you put your business plan and your financials inside the backpack. Here's the backpack. Oh, open up the backpack. Look what you've got. A notice at the top of the backpack, there's the little uh, GPS device, and there's the little emergency button. Now, it's not registered anywhere yet. Maybe it makes a noise, tweet, 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 tweet. But also, it will be registered to go to some security service. 
So find a way to use your character and your uh, business professionalism to present in a way that is going to make other people want to hear you, want to enjoy hearing you. So layer in creativity, add some creativity with great content. Show some personality and you'll have a winning, pre uh, a winning combination. Now this is actually available, um, well actually this link is not working. Interestingly, I thought I fixed it. It's the wrong time to try to fix this now, but uh, I will go back and fix it. All the links should be live so you can actually see the page I got it. Now I make some notes because there's a lot of stuff here and I'm not going to do everything in this presentation. But note here it says most organizations suggest not too much financials in your displays. That's the paper you're supposed to give them if they're interested. I'm going to suggest one slide with a few numbers is all you need to do. You know, a couple of projections. Don't give them these charts that just show you going up and up and up because that's not reality. They want to see something more reasonable. So that little RJD there says that's from me. Okay, we're still talking about ways to work your pitches. And one of them is practice. Come on, this is pretty simple, right? Just like your elevator pitch for next week. Practice it. Figure it out. Write it out. What do you want to do? And then practice it. And practice it again. And practice it again. And take an hour off. And come back and practice it again. Practice it so you don't have to think about it. There's no translation. There's no... Oh, what was I going to say? It becomes automatic. You're only going to talk for 30 seconds. When you do your professional pitch, you're going to practice so that you know what you want to say. Now, you could suddenly get stuck, but you've got little notes to help you. You've got maybe a, it's a PowerPoint, or you've got a couple of note cards that have the big items that once you see it, you go, oh, yeah, I want to talk about that. So practice and practice and practice. Outline the problem or the, uh, the opportunity in a story. This is a good chance early on in the first couple of minutes. You know, we saw the kids having the lunch, which was cute. But then they talked about, with the lunch boxes, they said, but they're really hard to wash. The lunch boxes are difficult to wash, and the lunch box covers are kind of impossible to wash. Maybe you can throw them in the dishwasher, but then, ew, they're not quite clean. That's a problem. And then show your solution. So that's what we talked about earlier. Keep it short, concise, and easy. Now look at this, what it says easy for the investor to explain to others. That means your concept is going to be easy enough that when I walk out of the meeting, I'm an investor in a company, and I meet my partner or my uh, supervisor who manages high big money, and he says, what are you doing? Well, I decided to give them $100,000. Well, why? And he can explain it very easily. Well, their concept was this, it matched with this kind of a uh, opportunity, and they look like this, they've got the production set down. All we need to do is to help them arrange a cheaper factory, because I think they're paying too much for their, for their manufacturing, and help them get into distribution channels. This is a big win for us, right? They want to be able to say it, so you want to show them, present to them in a way that they can explain to others. He says here, avoid using buzzwords. Buzzwords means those code words, those technical words inside a certain industry. Okay, So if I talk about SLA, you're not going to know what it means because SLA is something that is specific to language education or language scholar, second language acquisition, and 97% of the world has no idea what SLA means. Maybe 98% of the world. So don't use the buzzword unless you think your investors are very familiar with your industry. They know these words. Okay, And narrowly identify your target market. If you're selling dish soap 
with the baby bottle, with the baby toy, the whole society that buys dish soap is not your target market. All right, the single guy living in an apartment by himself probably is not your target. All right, grandmothers probably not the target unless they all go shopping for little baby kids. All right, so identify your target market narrowly. This comes from a bee plans website, and you can see this link is working. I will fix the other link. Now I've just used bullets, and this next argument says skip the bullets. It's from the same website, B Plans. It's actually a different page. It says skip the bullets. Slides full of bullet points are boring and don't help tell a story. Try to use large fonts and limit the number of words on each slide. I've talked about this before that my personal goal is never more than eight lines on a PowerPoint, never more than 50 words, that's busy and dirty. Well, oh my gosh, this picture you're looking at right now probably has 250 words. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, About 35 or 40 lines, it's horrible. Probably getting closer to 400 words, 350 words. The PowerPoint I was showing earlier, some of those slides had 10 lines. And as much as 100 or 120 words, possibly, but most of them were around 75 words. But they were just too busy. But I'm teaching and I'm not trying to get your money. But the one slide, you remember, only had one backpack on it in the first hour. So that was nice. They say skip the bullets, use images whenever possible and build an emotional attachment to your ideas. If you remember that backpack, and you know what, I'm just going to open up that PowerPoint again, and uh, if I can, let's see, let's do it this way. Uh, minimize this. That didn't work. Interesting. Here we go. And go back. And there's a backpack nice and cute. I chose a pretty one. I don't have a pack, a backpack with the devices on it. I actually was planning to bring one of my children's uh, backpacks from preschool, kindergarten, something like that. But as some of you know, due to the coronavirus going on right now, I couldn't go home the other day, so I couldn't get a backpack. Here's a picture. But we see some of these slides, like this one. This already has more words than I like. And this one, oh my gosh. As I said, I was using a particular text from a particular place that I wanted to go through. And this text is on the CTO. But I have a whole bunch of ugly slides here. I'm not proud of this. This one is still too many words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines plus a title and too many words. All right. Perhaps too many words. In this particular image, if you remember, I was showing off some different uh, business cards. So that was all right. I used some realia. Whoops, I don't want to close it. Reduce it. Back, back, back. Minimize. Let's go back. Practice your pitch. Where did we go? Ah, I see what happened. Hang on a second. There we go. Um, so. Practice your pitch. Skip the bullets. Complete enough, but not too much. It says your pitch deck will always be better when you present it, but it should ideally be able to tell some of your story without you being there to tell it. This is the challenge. <clears throat> Remember, your pitch deck, if it's a PowerPoint, if it's a PDF, if it's a hard copy, a paper printout, <clears throat> you are 
part of the pitch deck. You are, the, I like to say, you are the pitch. <clears throat> the pitch deck, the visuals are supporting you. You are the pitch. But at the same time, you want there to be enough information that they could look at it when you're not there. Maybe you have to send it in advance so they decide if they want to hear you. Maybe after you do the presentation, they say, uh, we want copies and one of our partners couldn't make the meeting. He wants to see it. So you need to have it. So you need to have enough information in your printed or visual pitch deck. You need enough to give the story, but not so much that it erases you because you are part of the pitch. All right, that's what this says there. And again, I got a link here and this one works. Where did I find it? So you can, of course, go to this website and see more. And it happens that skip the bullets and complete enough but not too much are both in the same web page. All right, vision and value pro proposition. This is the same kind of thing we were talking about earlier. But here, <clears throat> this page asks you to present a one sentence overview of your business. A one sentence overview. What is your business? What is the pro value that you provide? So for example, we are providing safety along with backpacks to kids. That's our value, safety. We're providing safety in the backpacks to kids. Something like that. Keep it short and simple. A great way to think about this slide, which might be your second slide or your first slide, is to imagine it as a short tweet. Okay, remember when you're, you're using Twitter, you have to describe your business in 140 characters or less. In a way your parents would understand, or somebody who's not involved in your business. Now, if you're like me, my parents understand a lot of things, but they don't understand the specifics of the area that I work in. If I wanted to talk about that backpack, well, my parents would understand the need for a backpack, and they certainly understand the, the need for kids' safety. But the details of how the company would work, they probably wouldn't get it because they're not entrepreneurs. They're not involved in manufacturing. They're not involved in sales. It's common for tech companies to make their value proposition a comparison to another well-known company. For example, you might see pitches that begin with things like, we're the Uber for pets. Okay, uh, Uber is known here in Korea because they tried to come in and they basically got shut out. Uh, they were told, nope, can't do that. But you could imagine something buddy, somebody saying, we're the cacao for pets. Really? Hmm. How does that work? Okay. But there, there's certain characteristics or certain uh, things that we think about when we think about cacao that would make sense for a company doing that. A, a company that's working with pets. So what is that? I don't know. But try then I'm going to explain what is the relationship. How can we be the cacao for pets? We're the Netflix for video games. Okay, Netflix are well known in Korea. It's a way for you to stream movies from whatever country, including Korea, to your home. Well, we're going to allow you to stream video games. Interesting idea. I don't think it would work, actually, but interesting idea. Okay, this is also from that previous... Uh, website what to improve what to include in your pitch deck so this might be a good thing to visit let's just go visit it three two one click and there we go the 11 slides you need to have in your pitch deck for 2020 and they're going to tell you what are the things you need to include vision da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. and then they have a few other ideas other slides you might include okay so 
that's just evidence that the, the links do work. Why is a vision important for a small business? It forces you to think about what are your ambitions? What are you trying to do? A vision can't be vague. It has to explain. Here they use the word declare. Dun, da, 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 I'm gonna. It declares the outcomes you expect and becomes a guiding light that will lead your business forward. So make sure your vision statement clearly states the outcomes you intend to create. Here's a few. Microsoft's original vision statement, a personal computer in every home running Microsoft software. Okay, remember, because Microsoft did not make computers. Microsoft made software. But the software is no good if there's no computers. How can we do that? We need to make sure there's a personal computer in every home running Microsoft software. So if you're old like me, you can remember there was a time when there were other softwares available besides Microsoft and we know now Apple. Apple had two. There was the Apple IIe computer and there they became the Macintosh. And they didn't run the same software. They were two different things. But if you go before Macintosh, before Apple, there were other processing systems like CPM, uh, you could write your own code. Still, you can find computers running Linux. So Red Hat is known. Um, so there's other systems. eBay to provide a global trading platform where practically anyone can trade practically anything. Okay, practically means almost. Okay. Almost anything. Well, almost anybody can trade almost anything. That was eBay. North Point Church to create a church that unchurched people love to attend. I'm going to pass on that one. Canadian Cancer Society creating a world where no Canadian fears cancer. That sounds very noble. We're going to fight cancer. Amazon to be Earth's most customer centric company. Customer centric? Focus on the company. Focus on the customer. To build a place where people can come to find and discover anything they might want to buy online. That's interesting because we often think about Amazon originally. Amazon was books. But now Amazon sells pretty much everything, kind of like a super department store, and they compete with eBay. Amazon sells from Amazon, but Amazon also is a platform that allows other companies to sell. So in many ways, Amazon and eBay are providing very similar services, except that Amazon has its own fulfillment center, its own uh, products that it buys and sells, like a department store, as well as selling other people's stuff. And eBay only sells other people's stuff. So eBay and Amazon, very similar. Milwaukee Public Library, every person's gateway to an expanding world of information. Think about this. Take a look at this. It doesn't say books. Public library. Every person's gateway to an expanding world of information. And then it gets longer, providing the best in library service. We guide Milwaukeeans in their pursuit of knowledge, enjoyment, and lifelong learning, ultimately enriching lives and our community as a whole. And it still doesn't say books. So it's quite broad, quite vague. Bowling Incorporated. I like this one. More people bowling more often, having more fun. More people bowling more often, having more fun. That's a pretty specific vision statement, even though it doesn't say anything too detailed, but clearly we want to encourage more people to bowl. And we want people to bowl more often. And we want people to have more fun when they bowl. And if we can do that, we think we'll make a lot of money. Okay? From Entrepreneur Magazine. Now, the next two sections, and we're getting closer towards the end. The next two sections simplify things. Come down to where we're talking about short or as it says in this first one, short and simple pitch deck. Not 25 car, not 25 slides or 45 slides. 
11 basic slides. That doesn't mean you can't have more, but first is your vision. You're opening, so you've got a slide, it's a picture, maybe it's got a few words on it, and it's your talking time. It's your elevator pitch. It's your 20 to 30 seconds to make people go, oh, wow, I want to learn more. Slide two, traction and validation. This is basically saying, okay, now let me give you a few more details to explain why you really want to listen to me, okay? What it is we're doing, why it's important. And that might be uh, some of the statistics we might talk about. Market opportunity, what's missing? Okay, these things are related. I'm not gonna go in, into too much detail. You can visit these pages and read more. Market opportunity, the problem, the product or service we're doing, maybe you would include the product, uh, uh, you know, the model or demonstration images in the photograph. I gave you a picture of a pack. Uh, the revenue model, where we think we're going to make money, how we're going to how we're going to receive money, marketing and growth strategy, how we're going to grow from just starting to selling uh, five thousand backpacks in a year. That means less than five hundred a month to 50,000 backpacks in a year. I think 50,000 backpacks in a year is about as much as we can do. How are we going to get from 5,000 backpacks to 50,000 backpacks? Um, the team. Again, we talked before about the team. The team seems to be important. Financials. We talked about that before. They're going to want to know something. Now, again, don't put too much in a picture or on a slide. You want to have the handout separate. Competition. Who are you competing against? Well, for my uh, adventure backpack, we're, we're competing against every other backpack company at one level. But on a second level, there's nobody really in our business. On a third level, you could say, well, we're competing with uh, children's cell phones. Are we really? Well, kind of, sort of, not exactly. So we, we want to look at the different things that people could imagine as our competition and say, so why are we different than the competition? Why are we better than them? So that picture, that slide might have a picture that has uh, regular backpacks, our backpack, a cell phone. Who's our competition? The backpack? Kind of, but not exactly, because they don't do the safety. The cell phone, cell phones are really expensive, and kids lose them. Otherwise, there's no competition. And the last slide is the ask, is when we say, okay, went now. And with all of that, we're looking for a partner investor to come in with $100,000, that would be ton manan, for... 15% equity in our company, who's in? Okay, and once again, we've got a page to link to. Another version, another perspective, another way of looking at this idea of basic short slides. This one has 10, but again, any one of these slides could actually be one or two more slides. They're kind of thematic. But we're trying to show you the concise, the simple, compact, get in there, give your message, and they can always ask you for more information. And you could have, after you do your, your first pitch deck, at the end of your pitch deck, you actually have more slides, more information. And if they ask you a question, just go, oh yeah, hold on a second. Slide, 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 slide. Okay, slide 32, that's it. Mm, here's the answer to your question. So we're trying to present a short, concise, compact, powerful pitch deck that you could then augment. So in this second perspective, we've got the company purpose, which you could call a title slide, to promote children's safety as they go to work, school, and play. I said work, that doesn't really work. To, pr to protect children's safety as they go out to school and play. What's the problem? Did you know that 5,000 children are abducted in a year in America? I made that number up, it's probably wrong. Right? 
and hundreds of other children hurt themselves every day and cry for mommy and mom doesn't know. Da -da 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 -da. What's the solution? Da -da! Here's our backpack. Deet, 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 deet. And it's got GPS tracking. Maybe you've got a phone and you can, if it's so fine, you could move the backpack to the other side of the room and you could show it on your GPS and your phone. I'm not sure. What's the market? Who's the competition? Right. Market. Who's buying backpacks? How many young kids are there in the year? You know, every year, uh, 22,000 backpacks are sold in Korea every year. I made the number up. How many kids start kindergarten every year? Every kid, when they start kindergarten, gets a backpack. I guarantee it. Who's the competition? Who else is out there? Right? What is the competition? We've got backpacks, we've got cell phones. Didn't hurt backpacks, so there's no competition. But how many other companies are selling backpacks? What are they selling them for? What are the features? Right? What's the value proposition? How are we going to make money? How are you investing in me going to make money? We, we going to make money. What's the business and revenue model? Again, more details about how we're going to make money. The team, again, the financials, again, current status and use of funds. We talked about that before. This is a different one. And then we've got two sets of sample pitch decks. Now, I want to make sure that this particular one opens well here. I'm not positive. Okay, there it to go. So the best way to move money. We're just going to click through it. How we solve the problem. Duola allows anything connected to the internet to move money quickly, safely, and at low cost. This sounds good. Maybe I want to get into this. Growing rapidly because of many use cases. Oh, the English is a little funny there. wonder where this is from. All right. How do we get here? Who's our team? How these Duola cards work? It's a flow chart that I'm sure he would talk about for three or four minutes. The problem with payments, they're expensive, they're slow. There's a lot of words on this picture. The problem with payments and more. I'm talking a little bit more. How Dwella works in one second. Product demo. Maybe I've got my cell phone with me. End-to-end -end solution. Details under the hood. This one actually has 18 slides. The network. Okay. Some some a lot of words here. This is a successful startup. Dwala really exists. Notice they even have links. Okay, so Dwala really exists. That is my talk for the second hour and yes it was intense uh, everything in the first hour and the second hour are here I'm going to shrink this I'm going to go back to this pop back up to the top remind you that I told you that in the first video we do general class information Introduction to Startup Timelines and Pitching, and information on your elevator pitch. You're going to do an elevator pitch next week. You need to be working on that. The second video, the one that we're just finishing up, would have more detailed information about pitching, although you're not actually going to do a pitch. And the third video, which will be coming up, will be working on vocabulary as we do most classes. So very quickly. I may introduce vocabulary or, or begin some vocabulary list, but it's your job to learn, not just to memorize, but to learn. Next week's class, elevator pitches, final vocabulary session, review for the final exam, and any questions you have for the class, and maybe we'll go out for lunch or something. Every company has a timeline. You have to plan that out, just like you plan your revenue and expenses you need to even before that understand that you don't just start a company in one day and then 
as we go to pitching. So let's finish this up. That is the end of the second video, and we will have video three next. Thank you very much. Whoops.